Sure. So um, essentially what we've been working on is, is and our lab is kind of focused on trying to develop drugs for, for a, an enzyme called galpanic anhydrase 9, which has been shown to be a, an anti-cancer target. Um, the problem we've always had is that there's a lot of carbonic anhydrases in your body, so uh, it's hard to specifically target this enzyme. So uh, we actually noticed that uh, one of our collaborators had published a paper. Um, uh, he's at University of Florence. His name's Dr. Claudio T. Superon. And he, he showed that um, kind of serendipitously uh, that, that saccharin or sweet and low will actually selectively inhibit CNI. So um, we kind of thought, well, why don't we, we push this a little bit further uh, and, and see if we can understand, well, why does that happen and, and can we develop drugs from that? And at the same time, actually, our collaborators at uh, Griffith University um, under uh, Sally Ann, Dr. Sally Ann Paulson were, was also kind of looking at the same thing. Um, so they were actually making some of these, these saccharin derivative compounds. Uh, so we kind of met together and, and, and started, well, let's figure out how we can, we can push this a little bit farther and, and, and make these better and, and see why they actually, you know, do what they do. So, in a nutshell. So um, the, the biggest, there's a lot of speculation on what its actual function is, however, uh, it, it's kind of been accepted that um, in aggressive cancer cells, usually they undergo a, a phenomenon called tumor hypoxia, um, and where essentially it, the cancer cell is favoring a more, more anaerobic type of metabolism, so, so uh, producing a lot of lactate and things like that. Uh, similar to, to, you know, it's the same metabolism that you'd use if you lifted weights or started sprinting. Uh, and so with carbonic anhydrase, does it because you're producing a lot of acids, uh, it's making the cellular environment very, very acidic or slightly more acidic than, than physiological conditions. So what carbonic anhydrase 9 will do is actually uh, convert CO2 to, to a bicarbonate, which acts as a pH buffer. So it'll keep the, internal, the, the inside of the cell essentially at a neutral pH, so it'll maintain its metabolism. So now it can thrive in, in these kind of harsh uh, hypoxic conditions. <laughs> so, so that's a good question, especially because uh, saccharin by itself isn't as selective as, as we would like. Um, and, and at this point, we're, we're kind of in the preliminary stage of seeing actually what, what saccharin does, when, even when you treat it with cells and things like that. Uh, so it's possible. It's possible you might uh, encounter some, some off-target effects uh, and things like that. But at the same time, if, if we can still, you know, saccharin's already kind of proven to be, be safe. Uh, so if, if even just giving it to somebody helps a little bit and, and doesn't produce as many side effects as you know, some other anti-cancer drugs, and I feel like we've done something good. So. Mm. Yeah, so, so saccharin will actually bind directly uh, with carbonic anhydrase and it completely blocks the activity once it's, it's found. Uh, so, uh, we, and we should be very clear, at, at this point this is very prelim, pre preliminary work, uh, so we're not telling cancer patients or, or anyone to go out and start consuming as much artificial or as much saccharin as possible. Uh, we're not sure of the, the therapeutic effects. We started those studies uh, looking at aggressive bre breast cancer cells, and that's in collaboration with uh, Dr. Susan Frost at University of Florida. 
and another grad student in our, land na- uh, uh, in our lab named uh, Ma'am Boge. And so she's kind of looking at, at what, what, you know, the next step to this. But certainly we're not telling people that, uh, you know, go out and have as much as possible and, and things like that. Right, so that was, and, and as I mentioned before, that was uh, mainly led by our collaborator, uh, collaborators at Griffith University, um, Dr. Sally Ann Paulson. And what, what she did, she also kind of built off of the, uh, the paper that um, was published in 2008 that said saccharin selectively will block CA9 activity. Um, and so she started to take the molecule itself and synthesize one similar that had different chemical groups kind of branching off of it to see if well, we can make it better, you know, more more of a drug candidate than turn by itself. Right. So yeah, so uh, and and that's kind of uh, Dr. Sally Ann Paulson. Uh, a lot of what their lab focuses on is how we can utilize sugars as uh, to design some of these inhibitors. And um, what that does for the compound is it's going to do two things. So where, where carbonic anhydrase 9 is on the, uh, the tumor cell, it actually sits on the outside. So when you add a glucose group to it, it no longer can get into the cell. So you can kind of target the location of, of where CA9 is. The other thing that's great, especially when you're talking about trying to give these to people or, you know, even just to do animal models, which we're trying to do and, and as the next step is that the drug becomes very soluble. Um, so it's much easier to work with than something that's, that's very, you know, doesn't like water as much. So. so currently, no. And the reason is because of, uh, if you look at the chemical structure of saccharin relative to some of the other ones, like those found in and, and some of these other artificial sweeteners, sweeteners um, the, the chemical structure is, it seems to, it's not favorable for, for blocking CA activity at all. Uh, the structure of saccharin is very similar to, to clinically used carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, so that's kind of, uh, I think, why you know, our, our collaborators back in 2008 said, well, maybe we can look at this as, a, as some kind of CA9, uh, CA inhibitor. So, so that's a good question. Literally, uh, we started uh, the cell work uh, about a week ago. Um, the results look, look interesting, but it's, it's, very, it's, it's really too early to, to say uh, or to make any bold conclusions. So as far as animal work, probably uh, maybe in, in a year or so, we'd be able to start pushing for animal models once we kind of underline the uh, mechanism in different types of cancer cells. So actually, uh, the, the initial work is actually using a packet of sweetened low and just literally seeing if you just increase amounts of, of that and, and introduce it to aggressive breast cancer cells, what it does. And so far, it seems that it starts to reduce cell viability, so they kind of get unhappy and start growing. You know, the, the growth slows down quite significantly. We've also done the same thing with uh, the saccharin conjugate that, that we published in our paper. Um, and it, it has a similar trend. Uh, so from there, w- what we'd have to do is, is we'd probably stick with, uh, well, first of all, we'd, we'd use pure saccharin, uh, you know, instead of putting a packet of sweet and well on these things. And, and, and also, we, we would continue with the, the saccharin conjugate. But definitely, we have to, to adjust the dosing regimen and also look at different cancer cell lines that exhibit different properties and represent different types of cancer before we can move on. Um, surprisingly, uh, the experiment itself was pretty straightforward. We already have a uh, CA9 mimic that we use regularly, and CA2 as well, as pretty easily expressed. So, as far as the mechanisms of or the methodology to produce this um, experiment was pretty 
um, a regular thing for our lab. So, so actually, in, in the active site of the enzyme, there's a there's a zinc molecule, uh, which essentially drives the catalysis. And what when saccharin binds to carbonic anhydrase, it actually binds right to that zinc, so it chelates that zinc. And once you you bind that zinc and displace a, a, a water molecule or a hydroxyl that's bound to it, um, essentially you abolish its activity. Right, because now uh, the, the active site is actually quite quite deep. <laughs> um, so what the glucose mo- uh, part of the, of, of the of that molecule will do is, is start interacting with residues that are uh, away from that zinc. Uh, so it, it makes an even tighter interaction. Mm. Right. That, that's correct, and, that, and uh, I think that property, along with it being not normally expressed in most of your, your in most of human healthy tissue, uh, kind of makes it a, a pretty nice drug target, especially in terms of delivery and, and reducing side effects. Right. Yeah. So, and, and actually, we've been asked this question a lot: Is this, are you being sponsored or funded by an artificial sweetener company? And the answer is no. Uh, this study had completely nothing to do with. Uh, it, it wasn't influenced. There was no um, support, or, or you know, we've never been in contact with an artificial sweetener company. Uh, the work is, however, funded by uh, grants from the National Institutes of Health. Thank you.